uh, this can of rubber cement. Is this being recorded, by the way? <laughs> I, I take the can of rubber cement. You ever take rubber cement and put it out on a, like a desktop and let it dry? And then you bring it all together and you, what's it look like? It's not. <laughs> all right, listen. Can you be a little more cool than that? <laughs> It looks like it looks like a booger, okay? That's that's, that's the Greek word. Right, booger. So I said, "Hun, watch this." And I take this thing and I stick it up like this, and now the thing is stuck there. <laughs> I said, "Come on, let's go." We walk out. My grandmother's apartment opened up into my dining room. There's my dad getting ready for the turkey to come out, you know, and he's sharpening his knife and everything, and his head's down looking at him. I go, I look at him. I go, "Hey, dad, you need any help in here?" And my dad goes. No, we don't need any help here. That's all right, son. You know, puts his head down. We'll make eye contact with him. I look at my wife. I go, and so we go into the kitchen. There's my mom getting the salad ready. I go, hey, mom, need any help in here? She goes, oh, yeah, I would. No, I don't need any help in here. I'm good. So, then I go out into the living room where all the adults are. Because my mom says, well, why don't you go out in the living room? Make sure everybody's washed up. So I go walking in there, hey everybody, how's it going? And all the adults go, hey, Uncle John. <laughs> and their heads go down, they refuse to look at me. And it's my little three-year-old niece who looks up and says, Uncle John, you got a big booger on your <laughs> My wife, my wife finally believed me. You know what? We will never grow in character as men if we do not have someone speaking truth into our lives. And, and part of the reason we don't want to speak, because if I speak truth into your life, and you don't like it, you will leave. You will walk away from me. You will not want to be around me. Would you agree with that? Is there some truth to that? Amen. Now imagine if you're married to a woman who tries to speak some truth into your life. Suppose you have a wife that you need to speak truth into her life, but neither one of you want to hear it. You will not continue to grow in character. One, and we're going to move on here because I only have an hour left. <laughs> now, once God works on our character, then he brings us to, he wants to take us to second base, which I call the community base. We, we are called into community. You know, the absolute, uh, and it rivaled uh, when people do studies, and, and is anybody here in advertising? I won't pick on you. I, I just want you to verify this for me. That w one of the most successful uh, advertising campaigns uh, was, the, was the Coke campaign. What did it used to be? Coke, it's it's the real thing. Everybody loved that, you know. And then um, everyone saw the importance of marketing and good marketing and a catchy little slogan. Slogan. So the army came up with one, a little song that went with it. What was it? Be. Do you know why the original people sang that? So you wouldn't have to. You should listen to yourself. <laughs> Opposition here. <laughs> Be all that you can be, and, and it was it was wildly successful. And then they felt it was uh, it was getting a little stale, so they came up with another one. And then now they have a third one. The one now, I like it. They say they're strong, and then there's army strong. Yep, yep. They they army guys can't think real well, but they're strong. <laughs> How many guys from the army here? Come on, don't be ashamed. How many guys from the air force? Good. You guys can surround me when I leave later. <laughs> Just in case one of the army guys understood that joke. <laughs> Any Marines here? No. Where, come on, don't be ashamed. What's the longest three years in a Marine's life? Third grade. <laughs> Be all that you can be, and then over here there's there's strong and there's army strong. In between was another wildly successful one. An army of one. And it, you as a man, how can you not want to go join the army? Well, in this tiny little petite 
black girl gets up there and she's got her helmet on, her Kevlar vest, she's got her M16, and she says, I am an army of one. I don't know about you, but that girl's not going to out-army me. I'm going to go and join. And I'm going to be an army of one. Anybody here, though, who is in the army knows, I don't care how long ago it was, that as soon as you get to basic training, the first thing those drill instructors do is beat that concept out of you. There's no such thing as an army of one. If you're an army of one, you are a danger to the other people in the unit. All right, you, you were created to be a part of a fighting team. All right, that there's somebody on your left, on your right, my right, there's somebody on my left, and, and, and we're a fire team, we're a, we're a patrol, we're a platoon, we're a company. We are all working in this together. I gotta tell you something. And this is where it's dangerous in the evangelical community to so emphasize that, we, that Jesus Christ is our personal Lord and Savior. That concept is not in the scriptures. We are saved for the purpose of coming into community and to being there for one another. And I gotta tell you something, it's my experience in, in 10 years of men's ministry and, and uh, all these years as a chaplain and all these years as a, as a pastor and, and 50 years now as a man, men are lonely and we are dying for community. We want a sense of intimacy that only comes from other men. And as I've studied on intimacy among men, the best stuff I see out there does not come from the church. It comes from the military. You see, because it, I have this theory. If you've been in combat together, and you hunkered down so afraid you were going to die, that you literally, I'll be polite here, soiled your pants. And guys do that in combat, you know. If you've done that, and the guy next to you has done that, and you both know you've done it, what is there left to hide from each other? <laughs> there's nothing left. So you begin to share the deep stuff that's going on. And there's this great sense of community. And uh, guys who have been combat together, and, and the other thing is the guys who have been prisoner of war together. Um, there's a guy who wrote the book Through the Valley of the Quiet, Ernest Gordon. Uh, he was in uh, the Japanese POW camps in, in the Philippines. And a couple years after the war, he's in uh, London in the, in the train station, and this guy walks up to him and says, Ernest, i got to tell you, don't get this wrong. I miss the camp. I don't miss the beatings. I don't miss how the guards try to destroy our humanity. What I miss is how we loved each other and how we took care of each other. That's the kind of community that God calls us into, and that's the kind of community that men are longing for. And if you want to know why we're not going to church as men, it's because, precisely because we don't want to be wimps. It's because we want something real to pass on to other people. But we're, we are often not permitted to have that kind of in-depth community with one another. And I've got to tell you something. When you come into that kind of community, this base is what I call the diagnostic base for the character base. Because if you're not a person of character, who, who wants you in their community? If you have a problem with lying, if you have a problem with arrogance, if you have a problem with pride, who wants you in the community? So, this is what base? It's the character, it's the, com the commitment base. You come down the base path of? Truth. You, and here truth is spoken so we can build? Care. Now we're heading towards? Yeah. And the way to get there is down the base path of trust. Truth, trust. We become trustworthy people. We become men of our word. And when we screw up, we become men who confess and apologize and make amends for what we do. And when we do that, we rebuild trust again. And trust brings us into community. We build trust by being um, vulnerable with each other. I know we're not supposed to use that word among men, you know. But that builds community. When I share with you that last year I'm in depths of depression, there's some people don't want to hear that about their pastor, about their leader. But it's who I am. And if you want to come into the, you know, community with me, you're going to have to realize that I am not perfect. 
And I'm going to try to trust you that you're going to be real with me. And then we begin to build community. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm looking at my time. I'm going to rush on here. All right. Once we are in community, and i got to tell you something. I don't know what pastors are here. But if you have never done a sermon series on the one another passages, love one another. What else? Encourage one another. Encourage one another.